to this videos? If we make 5000 likes to this video, we will implode more patriotic news. Thank you. Scare Musai breaks silence, makes stunning announcement after wife divorces. White House Communications Director Anthony Scaramucci got some devastating news this week when his wife Deirdre Ball divorced him largely because of his support for Donald Trump. Now, Scaramucci has broken his silence about what happened on his Twitter page. Leave civilians out of this. I can take the hits, but I would ask that you would put my family in your thoughts and prayers and nothing more, Scaramucci wrote, according to the Gateway Pundit. This came hours after Page Six reported that Ball had left Scaramucci because he joined the Trump administration. Dita has left him and has filed for divorce, a source said. She liked the nice Wall Street life and their home on Long Island, not the insane world of D.C. She is tired of his naked ambition, which is so enormous that it left her at her wit's end. She has left him even though they have two children together. Dita is not a fan of Trump and she hasn't exactly been on board and supportive of Anthony and his push to get back into the White House, the source added. Anthony is focusing on his children, his work for the president and the American people. There is nothing more important to him. I don't know who Deidre thought she was marrying but anyone who knows Anthony knows he's an ambitious man. Ball reportedly donated $5,400 to the congressional campaign of anti-Trump Democrat Kathleen Rice in 2015. She previously went by the Twitter handle at Mursaskramusai but has since deleted her account after her husband was appointed as White House Communications Director. What do you think about this? Let us know your thoughts in the comments section. Sean Hannity Victim of Fake News Ox News host Sean Hannity got some bad news this week after a GQ piece claimed that he ran up an enormous stab at President Donald Trump's Washington, D.C. hotel the weekend after the inauguration. Daily Mail reported that the story claimed that Hannity dropped $42,000 at the Trump International Hotel back in January. The story quoted an unnamed but forthcoming employee at the hotel who also told the writer of the piece that Hannity paid to have a 70-year-old lobster flown down from Maine that same weekend. Hannity took to Twitter on Thursday to defend himself from the claim. Fake news. Ridiculous fake news. Never happened, Hannity wrote. We know for a fact that Hannity is right about the lobster claim being fake for a number of reasons, starting with the very strict regulations regarding the maximum harvestable size of the shellfish. It's against the law to catch a lobster with a carapace or body shell length of 5 inches in the waters off Maine. These lobsters are kept in the waters to help with the breeding population and weigh no more than 4 pounds. These laws mean that companies would be hit with some hefty fines and draw the ire of their fellow lobstermen if they ever tried catching and shipping a crustacean of that size. The lobsters are often referred to as Maine lobsters when they are caught off the coasts of Massachusetts and Rhode Island. These states also have regulations against capturing a lobster of that size. Rhode Island has a shell length maximum of 5 and 1 fourth inches while Massachusetts has a 7 inch maximum. Once again, the mainstream media is attempting to silence Hannity by trying to make him look bad. Share this story if you will always support Sean Hannity. Two men and one woman caught doing the unthinkable to group of young girls. Two men have been arrested and one woman is at large after they allegedly pimped out eight teenage girls as part of a sex trafficking ring that was active in three states. Daily Mail reported that Quinton Brown, 30, and Gerald Lavelle Turner, 32, were arrested in California and charged with pimping 13 female victims, including eight minors, for commercial sex work. Mia McNeil, 32, is still at large at this time. Police said that Brown, Turner, and McNeil face a total of 54 charges that include sex trafficking, pimping and identity theft. The trio reportedly operated 16 brothel sites across California, Nevada and Texas. Eight of the victims were between the ages of 15 and 17 years old while the other five were between 18 and 21. Brown is facing 41 counts while McNeil faces 12 and Turner faces 6.
according to California's Attorney General's office said that the three ran their deranged sex ring in plain sight and that they used social media to lure the young women away from home and then used the same sites to sell them. Brown reportedly lured most of the girls from the Central Valley and trafficked them throughout the state, primarily in the Los Angeles area as well as in Las Vegas and Texas. Years ago, a human trafficking case of this magnitude was not likely, said Los Angeles County Sheriff Jim McDonnell. We knew the more we looked, the more we would find. McDonnell, who was joined by California Attorney General Xavier Becerra and Tulare County Sheriff Mike Boudreau, added that the three suspects sought to exploit children while defrauding their victims and other unsuspecting people. Police first caught on to the ring back in December when they were called to an apartment in West Hollywood to follow up on a missing person report filed in Tulare County. There, they found the missing teenage girl and two other adults in the apartment and later learned the apartment was being used as part of the human trafficking that included the victims. Becerra warned that human trafficking has become one of the fastest growing criminal enterprises worldwide. What do you think about this? Let us know your thoughts in the comments section. Just in Jeff Sessions makes major announcement after Trump attacks. President Donald Trump has been making headlines this week for bashing Attorney General Jeff Sessions on his Twitter page. Now, Sessions has broken his silence to say that though Trump's comments were kind of hurtful, he still respects him as a leader. Well, it's kind of hurtful, but the President of the United States is a strong leader, Sessions told Fox News host Tucker Carlson, according to CNN. He is determined to move this country in the direction he believes it needs to go to make us great again, and he has had a lot of criticisms, and he is steadfastly determined to get his job done and he wants all of us to do our jobs and that's what I intend to do," Sessions added. This came after Sessions told the Associated Press that he hasn't had the best week when it comes to his relationship with Trump, but has a harmony of values and beliefs with the president. I serve at the pleasure of the president. Sessions told the Associated Press. I've understood that from the day I took the job. During an interview last week, Trump said he never would have appointed Sessions as his attorney general if he had known he was going to recuse himself from the investigation into his campaign's collusion with Russia. Jeff Sessions takes the job, gets into the job, recuses himself, which frankly I think is very unfair to the president, Trump said. How do you take a job and then recuse yourself? If he would have recused himself before the job, I would have said, thanks, Jeff, but I'm not going to take you. It's extremely unfair, and that's a mild word, to the president. He also took to Twitter on Wednesday to slam Sessions for his handling into the Hillary Clinton investigation. Why didn't AG Sessions replace acting FBI Director Andrew McCabe? A Comey friend who was in charge of Clinton investigation but got big dollars, $700,000, for his wife's political run from Hillary Clinton and her representatives. Drain the swamp. What do you think about this? Let us know your thoughts in the comments section. Illegal immigrants block traffic to protest Trump, get rude wake up call. Fifteen immigrant rights supporters were arrested outside the Texas Capitol after they blocked traffic in an effort to defend existing immigrant protections and demand permanent legal status. I'm doing this for my family and sisters who are undocumented and my six-month-old son so he can live in a world where human dignity is respected," shouted Manuel Ramirez as he was arrested, according to the Texas Observer. Ramirez explained that he has been undocumented for 20 years but recently got permanent legal status, which was why he said he could put his life on the line. Police said that the 15 protesters have been charged with obstructing a highway, a Class B misdemeanor, and range in age from 20 to 42. After repeated requests by DPS officials to leave the roadway were ignored, the suspects were arrested without incident said DPS Staff Sergeant Victor Taylor in a statement. I benefited from DACA, but I knew that was always temporary and didn't benefit everyone in our community such as my parents, said Catalina Adorno, an activist from San Antonio, while in handcuffs. There are some serious risks to getting arrested, but 
I know that all the small victories the immigrant community has had were the result of people taking risks. This comes as President Trump continues to crack down on illegal immigration as top priority of his presidency. He traveled to Long Island on Friday to call for the violent MS-13 gang, which is full of illegal immigrants, to be destroyed. Trump said that MS-13 gang members have transformed peaceful parks and beautiful neighborhoods into blood-stained killing fields. They're animals. He pledged that his administration would dismantle, decimate and eradicate MS-13. We're getting them out, Trump said. They're going to jails and then they're going back to their country, or they're going back to their country period. Share this story if you think these protesters deserve to be arrested. Donald Trump lands in Long Island, look what he did next. President Donald Trump headed to Long Island, New York on Friday to urge Congress to dedicate more funding to his crackdown on illegal immigration and violent crime. Daily Mail reported that departed from Washington, D.C. early in the afternoon and once he landed, the president spoke at Suffolk County Community College in Brentwood, New York. This is close to where the ultra-violent street gang MS-13 has committed a string of gruesome murders, including the massacre of four young men in April in a century Lysla Park. During his speech, Trump continued his tough talk on immigration and called on Congress to dedicate more funding to border enforcement and faster deportations in a speech in front of law enforcement officers and the family members of crime victims. These are animals, Trump said of MS-13 a violent gang full of illegal immigrants. When you see these thugs being thrown into the back of the paddy wagon, you just see them thrown in, Ralph, I said, please don't be too nice, Trump recounted to laughter. Like when you guys put somebody in the car, and you're protecting their head, you know the way you put your their hand over? Like don't hit their head, and they just killed somebody? Don't hit their head? On Friday, Attorney General Jeff Sessions was in El Salvador giving an address at an International Law Enforcement Academy graduation near the MS-13 headquarters. MS-13 is based here in El Salvador, but its tentacles reach across Central America, Europe, and through 40 U.S. states, and to within yards of the U.S. Capitol, Sessions said. With more than 40,000 members worldwide including 10,000 in the United States MS-13 threatens the lives and well-being of each and every family anywhere they exist and everywhere they infest. Share this story if you support Trump's crackdown on the MS-13 gang.